ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good evening and welcome to Historic Pascals in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. As the Alumni Associations of Clark Atlanta University, the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and Morehouse School of Medicine Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences celebrate a legend honoring the legendary Dr. Eugene Harrington. Oh my, and the crowd went crazy for Eugene Harrington. Well, thank you all so much. My name is Vince the Voice, and it gives me great pleasure to be here with you. I met Dr. Harrington when I was working at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff in 1999 through 2003, something like that. And just from the very beginning, he is a wonderful man. He is the same all the time. What he say he gonna do, he gonna do. He gonna tell you how you need to do it. He gonna say it in a way that you can't refuse it. I think only my mama had more effect on me when they was talking than Dr. Eugene Harrington. Give him another big round of applause, everyone. And so we're going to have this great saying, code for celebration for him today. Again, we're reaching back to the foundations. And boy, we got some, I, I, can I get a degree tonight? <laughs> I mean, if anybody want to make me an honorary something, <laughs> I will take it. I will take it. Greatness in this room tonight. And I'm going to take a point of pleasure. If you walk through this uh, beautiful facility, you see all these historic pictures on the wall. Right down the hallway, this young lady's pictures are on the wall. She is our great retired state judge here in Georgia, as well as the former founding first lady of Clark Atlanta University. Give it up for Judge Brenda Hill Cole, everybody. Judge Cole. And Dr. Harrington trying to tell me what to do on my job. Y'all see that? See, still, we got all this <laughs> in order, sir. No, 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 please. I'm sorry. No, no, because I'm, I'm wrapping up now. You was here. That was beautiful. Anybody want to take our picture? Oh. Read a bit weak. Huh? No, we're going to get to all that. But right now, we're going to have the invocation, and it is going to be done by this beautiful woman who is uh, Dr. Harrington's pastor, spiritual leader, advisor, and such a wonderful woman, the science of mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Dr. Patricia Martin. Well, before I get into the prayer, let me just say that he is my mentor. He's the one that I call to cry on and tell everything to. So we are equal here. We, we depend on each other. Although I did teach him everything he knows. <laughs> All right, please come. Come still with me and just take a deep breath and just let everything go and know that God, our Heavenly Father, is the allness, the isness, the oneness of everything and everybody, the living Spirit Almighty. In Him, we are his children. And therefore, he then is the very presence all around us, in us, through us, and certainly for us. In his allness, we are his children, and we know this. We are spiritual brothers and sisters in one accord in his oneness, in this now place, space, and time. His love, his unconditional love fills each one of us with joy, 
and happiness. What a time in our life. What a history. All but in his is isness. We move. We breathe. We live and have our very existence in him and him alone. It is his life that we live in day by day. And so we come together this afternoon to celebrate greatness, God's pure and perfect work of his child, his earthly child, in the name of Eugene Harrington. Dr. Harrington had, uh, it did accept his gift, his spiritual gift of education and teaching. And God guided him through every step of the way. And he, in turn, turned to the Father as the Father had turned to him. And so, in the name of Jesus Christ, our, our master, earthly teacher, I speak my word in praise and thanksgiving for this wonderful occasion and for all of those involved in making it possible. I speak my word for the continued blessings of Dr. Harrington and his family and everyone here. And I, I ask for the continued blessings for each one here in love his unconditional love, not only for them that's here, but their families also. This is in divine right order. I know this, I believe this. And therefore, it is good and very good. Thank you, Father, Mother of God, for this occasion and everybody here. Thank you, it is now so, and so it is, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we're going to uh, begin to have our wonderful Paschal. So those of you that have never eaten here at Paschal's, you're in for a treat. Food is delicious. It's historic. And so we're going to get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're enjoying that meal from Paschal's, aren't you? Isn't it delicious? Give them a round of applause. <laughs> And they've been serving this delicious food for a long time. Dr. King ate some of this chicken. <laughs> Dr. King daddy ate some of this chicken. <laughs> hey, this is some good chicken. You leave here fired up and ready to go after eating. And I'm sure you know about the history of Pasco. Some of you, you know how they supported the civil rights movement. And uh, we're just, again, thankful for, for them hosting us here tonight. I'd like to thank Dr. Banan again for the great, uh, Banan for the uh, great music. And uh, the program booklet, uh, it's just outstanding. I just want to say that uh, the way that our honoree is honored and the bios of the folks that are here to honor him tonight. Could you have a committee stand? Could I uh, please ask the committee who put this booklet together and who really worked on this program, would you all please stand at this time? And give them a big round of applause. They were outstanding. Outstanding. Tonight again, we're honoring a legend expanding over three decades of teaching in higher education, touched so many people, touched my family, Touched my pocket even, hired me one time back in the day. That's a real, I, I love this man, ladies and gentlemen. And so that's why I'm here tonight. And uh, we have a lot of friends here. I'm gonna be uh, uh, speaking about him. And so what I'd like to do at this time, we're going to uh, start our program, our official program. And I'd like to ask, okay, I'm gonna give the uh, order of the flow and you'll just come up, uh, accordingly, okay? So I'm gonna to introduce to you our first four 
greats that you're going to hear from here tonight. First, from South Carolina, the director, founder, creator of Operation Pride, Dr. Ramondo James will be coming up. Give him a round of applause. He'll be followed by beautiful song leading us in Lift Every Voice and Sing. Miss Tracy Grayson will be following Dr. James. Following the lovely song from Miss Grayson, we're going to have the occasion, and the occasion is going to be given by Dr. Harrington's right hand woman at Morehouse School of Medicine. That's none other than Miss Joan Trent. And then we're going to have proclamations. They'll be read by the illustrious Dr. Clifford Johnson. So ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ramondo James. Such a pleasure to be here. I do pray and hope that you can understand why you're here. You were supposed to be here. It's ordained by God for you to be here and for me to be here. I say welcome, peace be unto you. I sound a liquor to those that are in that trend. Let me say something to you in brevity. I will be back another time. You see earlier, just about um, two days ago, the doctor said, don't you move from South Carolina to come here. You're supposed to have surgery. You're gonna need somebody to drive you. Well, I called and I called. Didn't want to call my mentor. I didn't want to get him all upset. So I called uh, my other brother, one of them walking around here, Dr. Hill, just to tell him that I can't be there. I can't, but I'm going to get somebody to, to bring the packages to you. Shit, just in about 30 minutes after I tried to make those calls. I turn to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And let me tell you something, I had two canes, I got one now, I had two canes, I had pains everywhere. You name it, I had the pain, I still got the L4, L5, L6, and I guess you got 12, 13, I don't know how many people that's fun. I made that phone call, and I couldn't get him. But listen to this, for those that, you're on something special here. I call it Renaissance time. And for those definition, it means new birth. For what has happened here today, this week, I didn't know any of these individuals other than one or two. We all have come together with you. You're about to witness, not the Harlem Renaissance, not the Italian Renaissance, but a Renaissance starting with my brother over here. And when I come back, I'm going to connect the dots. But I want to acknowledge, I got on the phone when I recognized that God said, look, call somebody for all that he has done to you and for you in South Carolina and the nation. He need to be recognized. I had no idea that it would expand itself to all of this. No idea. But you see, God said, drop the cane. I called Miss Tracy. Didn't know Miss Tracy. Had never seen her in my life. I got the connection through my brother again. Now remember, I'm speaking to all of you because some of you are on projects that you, you're entertaining. You're about to do, or you're in process of doing. You leave from here with what we're sharing with you in brevity. I said, Tracy, we got to do something. Tracy, raise your hand. Didn't know her. I said, Tracy, we need to do something. I was led by God. We need to do something. She said, well, Doc, I'm just meeting you. I don't even know you. What do you need to do? <laughs> I don't know. I said, whatever it is, whatever talents you got. And then God sent us to a man that you're going to be hearing from later. I'm not going to introduce him. But this brother Hill, I'm acknowledging him. Brother here, raise your hand. They all know you anyway. Hotel. <laughs> Give this man a big round of applause. The last time I saw him, I was being entertained at one of the hotels in Atlanta. It was my graduation time. He and his father, who died later. 
I had two sons. One was a guest speaker on the legacy of a father. He was there in the audience. That was the last time he saw my son because my son got hit by a train four months later. The legacy of a father. I haven't seen him since. Oh, but let me tell you, his fingerprints are all over this place, man. Oh, yeah, he was the teacher of uh, the Stacey Adams, who might be part of the soon. And he talked, uh, what's the other one's name? Spurlock, who was a dude. Uh, Warnock. 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 Shit. He's in our miss. I want to acknowledge all of you, my brother and my sister. And when I come back, I'm going to connect the dots as to, I think he gave me another time to come back up here. Yes, you're going to present Dr. Harrington. I'm going to present Dr. Harrington. He never voice back then. You got to go to his church in, in Chicago, too. Dr. Harrington and your family, brother, I love you like a brother because I know what you've done for me and my family and, and, and my sons that passed on. With that, I say, God bless all of you. Come up here with power. Come up here like you own it. Come up here. You're not fearful. You come up here in faith. There's a message out here, my boys and my girls, my ladies and my gentlemen. God bless all of you. My time is out right now. God bless you. Can you all join us as we're going to sing, uh, lift every voice and sing? Excuse me, I, I, I might uh, do this a lot because I don't have my, I left my glasses in the car, uh, my readers. So can we start? You ready? Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings. Ring with the harmonies Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on Till victory is won. Let's sing one more verse. Um, stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod.
Tracy, Miss Tracy Grayson, everyone. Obviously, I'm not Miss Joan Trent, but she wanted to be here with us tonight and could not make it, but that's okay because we still want to give her a round of applause. So let's do it. The right hand for Dr. Harrington. <laughs> Ms. Trent. Tracy, again, I was, we was talking before we sang, and I was telling you, you said you was going to do the second verse. I was like, oh, can, you, can we be sure about that second verse? Because sometimes you get deep in the song, they start singing the truth about it. You know, like, these people crazy. Sorry, I digress. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and, and Dr. Hill, if in your booklet, it doesn't do justice, Dr. Eugene Harrington, who got his high school diploma from the Lucy Craft Laney Senior High School in Augusta, Georgia, then got his bachelor's degree in sociology and psychology from Suffolk University in Boston, Massachusetts. Understand, broke the color barriers at that time. Then a master's degree in social planning and community organization from Boston College Graduate School of Social Work. Then a doctoral degree in clinical psychology from California Institute of Integral Studies in San Francisco, California. And a master's degree in theology from the Holmes Institute in St. Louis, Missouri. Devoted all his professional career teaching counseling psychology at the master's and doctoral level. Private practice, but also worked in public and community mental health or behavioral health services. In the north, south, east, and west, he's worked with underserved populations. Special interests in early adolescent development and other male developmental mental health issues. He has always, always strived to interface behavioral health concepts with spiritual interventions. Dr. Eugene Harrington, PhD, MSW, LCW, M dot D I V. Give it up for Dr. Harrington. Come on now. Wow. Come on, give it up for Dr. Harrington, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Harrington. And it goes on. I want to skip that bear gun. I do want to teach in the Department of Counseling Psychology, uh, Psychological Studies at Clark Atlanta University, the Addiction Studies Program at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, where I met him. We were stamping out smoking. Remember, it was the tobacco cessation uh, grant. It was a wonderful time. Currently an assistant professor of clinical psychology, uh, psychiatry in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Morehouse School of Medicine and co-project director of the Historically Black Colleges and University Center for Excellence in Behavioral Health. Jeez. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> project co-director, assistant professor of clinical psychiatry, Department of Psych... I'm tired. It's a bad man. And guess what? The fruit didn't fall too far from the tree. So it gives me great pleasure to bring up to the podium at this time, who's going to read the proclamations. Everyone, please welcome Eugene Harrington, Jr. Come on down. Come on down, Eugene. You just won a brand new car. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Take your time, brother. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't prepared for this. I thought my sister was going to read it, but uh, since I'm the baby, I guess I got the task. <laughs> so if I miss a few words or anything. I got my glasses on, but they ain't the right ones. So. <laughs> Starting off with a bang. Yeah. Right here. 
Yeah, it's gonna be good. Wow. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> A proclamation honoring Dr. Eugene Harrington, the Alumni Association of Former Students, colleagues of Dr. Eugene Harrington from Clark Atlanta University, the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and Morehouse School of Medicine, proclaim offered to offered by committee members Euro Hill, Step, Clever, Trent, James, Grayson, Dunson, Turner, Max, Johnson, Johnson Hill, Roberts, Dooley, uh, Syke Roberts, Walker, Martin, Wright, Cook, Mosley, Davis, Wilkerson, J. Hill, uh, Bailey, Beavers, Myers, a resolution honoring Dr. Harrington. Whereas it, was, it is with great respect for his dedication and sacrifice on behalf of others through education that we are proud to join with the historical black college and university centers of excellence as they honor Eugene Sonny Harrington. His contributions uh, to the professional development, structure, and overall operation of the respected historical college, black colleges and universities that he served from, from 1990 to 2021, have distinguished him as a key actor in the efforts to provide students with best opportunities provided possible to realize their full potential through learning and clinical practice. And whereas Dr. Eugene Sonny Harrington is a man of great uh, versity who has never lost sight of his ultimate aim of healing and broadening the horizons of opportunities for others. To this end, he has brought a wealth of excellence experience as a professional, a professor of counseling, substance abuse treatment, spirituality and psychiatry, grantmanship, grantsmanship, private practice clinical and child daycare business owner. With his experience, he has blended his impeccable administration suave to create a rare combination which leads to his career rise as the found, founding co-director of the historical black college and universities for excellence at Morehouse School of Medicine, Department of Psychiatry. Whereas among his many areas of expertise, he has been especially effective in teaching clinical interviewing skills, capacity building, and establishing of substance treatment programs, including the master program at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Clearly, his impact has been throughout, felt throughout HBCUs across the United States, Virgin Islands, and beyond. Res Resolved by the Joint Alumni Association of Former Students of Dr. Harrington and the Historical Black Colleges and Universities for Excellence, alumni and colleagues and colleges concur that tribute trib trib be hereby according Eugene Sonny Harrington as he is honored by this August body and be it further. Resolved that a copy of this resolution be awarded to him as a small reflection of our respect at his milestone celebration. Adoption by the Joint Alumni Association of Former Students of Dr. Eugene Harrington, May 26, 2022, presented on May 27, 2022.
someone very special. He's going to join us via satellite, CNN style. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations, you. I suppose that the work that you have ahead of you is going to be harder and more than the work you have behind you. But it will be good work. We met in 1969, in September, around our birthday. That's when we reintegrated the Boston College Graduate School of Social Work. And since that time, we have remained true friends. I do remember as a side, uh, one night that uh, I played piano and sang a song. And when I finished and you walked off, and I walked off, people in the audience asked you if it was you that was playing and singing. You told them yes. The astonishing thing about that for me was, they believed you. They could not tell the difference between me and you, and we were in our second year. But put that aside. The other amazing thing about uh, Eugene is uh, your giving. Now, I call this the gene in infestation. Whereas you have provided my wife with the basis for her glass collection, with this large yard here and one right behind me, which serves as the basis of her glass collection. Then you have your glasses that were contributed by you up here, the smaller ones. And that has been a real important part of this collection. But you didn't stop with the glass. You went over to providing all kinds of plants. And so I have lots of, of oxygen in my house. Uh, over here you will see, well you can't see it, but there is plants that you Right. We're going to walk on over to the living room so I can show you some more of your plants that you have uh, <laughs> provided for us. Now this monster plant right here, I'm going to have a seat because I'm old. It's called the ZZ plant. The ZZ plants all over the place. I have two in front of the fireplaces and two at the window. You have plants all over the place, but I call them a real mess because I don't like you. So I like to keep so Gene is so good at this, he's so that. And therefore, I decided I don't like you. But thank you anyway. <laughs> Lastly, let me say that I hope for you a happy retirement a long happy retirement. And I have friends that one day, one bright morning, that we will meet somewhere around God's throne. Lastly, I know that your family and your house will be filled with love always. I pray that heaven is here on earth for you. But as they say, but wait, there's more. We have got some speakers that are going to come forth, Dr. Harrington, and this lineup, awesome. We're going to have first, and again, I'm going to introduce you now and then just follow each other accordingly, please. We're going to hear from the professor and chair department of Psychology and Behavioral Sciences at Morehouse School of Medicine, Dr. Gail A. Mattox. She will be followed. She will be followed by the Dean of the School of Education at Clark Atlanta University, Dr. J. Fidel Turner. He will be followed by a friend from England, Arkansas. Long time England, Arkansas 
Reverend Dr. R. Steps, and finally the Director of HOTEP, mentee, colleague, and friend, Dr. Ural H. Hill, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Junior. Yes, sir. And so, please welcome from Morehouse School of Medicine, once again, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gail A. Maddox. It is certainly a privilege and an honor to share with you my journey with Dr. Harrington, which covers quite a bit of time. So we go way back to 2004, all the way to the present. And as you've heard, I mean, how often do you have a faculty member with so many different degrees? <laughs> and we make use of all of them. So let me share with you the number of ways. First of all, we were fortunate when SAMHSA, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, set out a competitive grant announcement saying that they wanted to establish an HBCU National Resource Center for Substance Abuse and Mental Health for $1.3 million. So clearly, in Morehouse School of Medicine, Department of Psychiatry, we said, hey, Let's go for this, because we had already served as the headquarters for the HBCU Substance Abuse Consortium, which was just, a, again, a very important part of our history. But now, SAMHSA was willing to put money into outreach for all of the HBCUs. So I called on my colleague. We had a planning committee group. We were up there drawing all kinds of diagrams of how we were going to make this work, and we were successful. And it was definitely dependent on Dr. Harrington's credentials. He was co-project director, I was project director. And we were funded from 2005 to 2018. That says a lot for continuous funding. So over that period of time, we had about $8 million. But the, the way we wrote the grant was that we were giving it back to the HBCUs. So we didn't really we just used that money to help have staff to coordinate it. But the idea was that we would say to the HBCU community, here's an opportunity for you to develop a unique project on your individual campuses to promote substance abuse and treatment, prevention, and behavioral health awareness. And so most of the funds went right back into the HBCU community. So I'm very proud of that. But during that time, we were able to really meet with students, uh, offer students, you know, ideas about career paths, but more importantly, to get them comfortable with recognizing that there's treatment there if you're experiencing some psychological distress as a student. So we're very proud. And SAMHSA continues to fund a Center for Excellence, which is now at Clark Atlanta University. And we're very proud of the fact that the focus shifted a little bit, so it's more on workforce development, whereas our grant focused a lot on um, access to treatment and care for students. But that wasn't all that Dr. Harrington did for the Department of Psychiatry. He was involved with treating medical students from year one, medical school is four years, but once you complete your MD degree, then you have to decide on well, what am I gonna specialize in? Is it OBGYN, is it pediatrics? You know, we want to all become psychiatrists, but we realize that that's not <laughs> going to happen. So we used his skills to work with our first-year medical students, introducing them to behavioral health. How do you communicate with a patient? How do you recognize that patient as more than just an illness? You know, how do you establish that doctor-patient relationship? So he worked with our first-year medical students. He then worked on with our third- and fourth-year medical students. And then those students who decided that psychiatry was going to be their career, he worked with residents. We call them residents. And that's another four years. So by the time you, you know, complete your training as a psychiatrist, you've gone through four years of medical school, four years of tra training after medical school. And he helped those residents in so many ways. He was course director for a required course on religion, spirituality, <coughs> and psychiatry. So who else would be perfect for a course like that? by Dr. Harrington. He also worked with our residents and students on learning about addiction. And so that degree and his, his knowledge about substance abuse and addiction 
were so beneficial. Understanding psychotherapy, particularly from a culturally competent perspective. And so yeah, I'm here today to say that he has touched the lives of so many of our graduates from Morehouse School of Medicine. Um, he's been an excellent faculty member, mentor, to me, the best colleague that I could ask for. And I mean, he's still a member of our volunteer faculty, so I'll call him up, you know, and ask him, and he's always generous with his time. And so I just really wanted you to understand the magnitude of how he contributed to the Department of Psychiatry at Morehouse School of Medicine. And he is loved by so many. And you know, I can only say that it is an honor and a privilege to really share with you the wonderful contributions of my friend and colleague, Dr. Harrington. So thank you for this opportunity. Supervisor. <laughs> I have to put that in. Dr. Harrington, uh, such an honor to be here. Um, next year I'll celebrate 30 years as a graduate of Clark Atlanta University from the Department of, of Counselor Education. Uh, Dr. Harrington was one of my former professors. Uh, he was a member of my dissertation committee. Uh, he's also one of my colleagues. We became colleagues um, shortly after I completed my doctorate at Clark Atlanta University. But more than that, Dr. Harrington has been a true mentor to me and to many of us. Would all of you who are graduates of the Department of Counselor Education please stand? <laughs> Dr. Harrington, you taught us so many lessons, but the thing that resonates the most with me, with you, is always been your dignity, your grace, you always are so calm and so pleasant. Even when we were stressed out about dissertations and about accreditation <laughs> and everything else, Dr. Harrington was always that calm person. And you don't know how much that has impacted my development and my growth as a leader as well. As I was that young 28-year-old who thought he knew everything, and I just quickly discovered that I didn't. So. <laughs> But thank you so much for all that you've contributed to uh, Clark Atlanta University and School of Education in our professional lives. And with that spirit in mind, um, I bring you greetings from Clark Atlanta University and President George T. French. And we have a resolution that we'd like to share with you. This is a resolution of appreciation for and acknowledgement of the service, dedication, and work on the occasion of the retirement of Eugene Sonny Harrington, PhD. Whereas Dr. Harrington began his professional career after earning a master's degree in social work, community organization, and social planning in 1971 from Boston College Graduate School of Social Work and a PhD in clinical psychology from the California Institute of Integral Studies in 1990. And whereas Dr. Harrington has served with distinction as associate professor of clinical psychiatry an associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the Morehouse School of Medicine, and whereas Dr. Harrington served as a distinguished professor at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff from 2002, August 2002 through May 2004. Dr. Harrington engaged in addiction research and teaching, participated in producing the first stellar class of master level graduate students in addiction studies, founded and assisted in developing the first Addiction Studies Honor Society, Delta Phi Beta Addiction Studies Honor Society International, and whereas Dr. Harrington's high ethical standards and unique abilities were evidenced during his tenure as an associate professor at Clark Atlanta University School of Education, 
Uh, his tenure began September 1990 and concluded in June 2002. He was our program and director of counseling psychology. Whereas beyond his professional contributions and strengths, Dr. Harrington's personal attributes gained the friendship and trust of his peers. He has shared his extensive clinical expertise through more than 30 years of service for the benefit of students, staff, patients, and the greater Atlanta community, ensuring that work, learning, and quality care was his highest priority. And now, therefore, be it resolved on behalf of Clark Atlanta University does hereby express its sincere appreciation and gratitude for the life, work, and dedication of Eugene Sonny Harrington, PhD, and his contributions to the field of psychiatry. And we extend our sincere wishes for a long and happy retirement presented on this 27th day of May, 2002, signed by Dr. George T. French, Jr., PhD president, and Dr. J. Fidel Turner, Dean of the School of Education. And now he's the Dean of the School of Education. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's all God's grace, Dr. Harrington, and great mentoring. And this is a fun bag. Um, it's some swag in here from Clark Atlanta and some things that you can enjoy during your retirement. So well, thank you for the School of time. Education. Yes. Yeah. carefully because I am drunk off of greens and <laughs> peach cobbler. And I said, Dr. Harrington, if I start nodding, would y'all say, wake up? <laughs> Good evening to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I first want to say on behalf of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Addiction Studies Department, we all give all of you greetings to today Dr. Dr. Harrington and to the members of the Dr. Harrington's Celebration Committee and all of the professionals here today from academia, I give you greetings today. And I would also like to give recognition to Dr. Cheryl Jackson Golden, which is one of our professors. Would you please stand at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. She's a sister professor there in our addiction studies department. And I also, I have to give recognition to our spouses that join us tonight. Mr. Golden and Mr. Steps. Give it up for the <laughs> I tell you, after riding seven long hours after the first three, <laughs> I might be a little delirious, so hang in with me, okay? I would like first to uh, recognize in the years 2002 through 2004, the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff Addiction Studies Department was exceptionally blessed and fortunate to have Dr. Eugene Harrington as our professor and mentor. Tonight, we want to thank you for supporting and celebrating our lives throughout the years. And y'all, we mean all of the 20 years, we, when we had an accomplishment, we would ask somebody, you still got Dr. Harris's phone number? So we, through his teaching, we have wardens, we have department heads, we have Arkansas Department of Corrections wardens, we also have professors. We have abundance of talent due to your teaching, and we want to thank you tonight. Amen. We were the first graduating class of our program in addiction studies at the university. We were from all walks of life and many cultural traditions struggling 
the demands of school with the responsibilities of work and family life. We even have a baby that we still call the Diction Studies baby that was born that year. <laughs> Andrea Little's a little girl graduated this year. You have shown us countless motivation and patience. Dr. Harrington never failed to stress the importance of higher education and that it is the passport to our professional advancement. For many of us, you took the role of father figure. That in many occasions, you became the in the moment counselor. One of my classmates, I can distinctly remember, and I'm sure you will too. When we got in class, she said, Dr. Harrington, how can we get an A? And you said, you got one, now how you going to keep it? <laughs> that was Sana Lee. I know y'all remember that. <laughs> Dr. Harrington, I truly believe that you were God's agent of revelation to our class in the area of addiction studies. When I think of you, I'm persuaded to compare you to the example of Romans 12. As a professor, you did not just let the world around you squeeze you into a mold, but God allowed you to remold our minds within us so that you proved in practice that the plan of God for you was good and met all his demands. In Romans 12 and 6, y'all, I'm a preacher. I can't help it. I got to tell it like it is. In Romans 12, 6 through 8, it told us this. There is an exhortation to use and how to use it. The gifts of God has granted to an individual members of the church. You know, all of us in church. Spiritual gifts are not given on the basis of merit, but because God chooses to give them. Dr. Harrington, your teaching and exhortation encouraged us to practice what we had learned and what we had, you taught us. You encouraged me to read those endless literature reviews. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> On dual diagnosis. Also, to use data-driven presentations. I remembered it so well. And thanks again for insisting that I gain an understanding on the difference between qualitative and quantitative studies and research. Which I want you to understand, Dr. Harrington, that helped me to make a five out of five on my dissertation. All I could hear was, don't forget the data. And I always started out with it. You served in a practical way. The word said, he who gives, we should also give to others. Yes, you were the channel through whom God provided the resources we needed to be successful. We are thankful that you exercise your gifts with liberality. You're, you never forgot why God blessed you. You were blessed and you never failed to bless somebody else. Amen. So in saying and ending, we are thankful that you gave with mercy and you did it cheerfully. So congratulations on extending your weekend five more days. <laughs> Thank you so much. come back up here in between that. See, you just preached us out of the room. I don't have to say nothing. I feel like doing the benediction. All right. Now, <laughs> you done said it. Praise God. And, but that's really the heart and uh, 
the center of what I really want to say. Ultimately, you see a lot of Reverend Doctors on the program, right? We are the product of one who took the, low, the road less traveled. He, he lived at the place where science and spirituality met. And wherever we were called to be and what we were called to be, he shared both science and spirituality, all in excellence. So we were able to follow that journey. Um, he had this new movement before the public white institutions got the move. There, everyone's talking about interprofessional education and interdisciplinary dialogue. Well, you know, black folk have been doing that for a long time. And Dr. Harrington was teaching us how to do it clinically. Utilize the clinical practice with a Christian foundation, with a Buddhist twist, in the classroom, in the courtroom, in the prisons, in the schools, in private practice, in secular life, in spiritual life, on yourself, and on your wife. <laughs> You had to learn how to apply what you learned in the classroom to your personal life. Yes. And so he went beyond the classroom with each one of us. And, and that's what brings us here today. This is the beginning of Memorial Day weekend. Give yourselves a round of applause for taking the first day and celebrating with us. This is like a family. Thank you, uh, that, that, that proclamation, Eugene Harrington Jr. I kept looking at him and saying, you look so familiar, and I'd never met him. It's because he looks just like Dr. Harrington. <laughs> I was like, I know, I know you. But um, thank you so much. As you read that, that was from all of us. And we've become a family. And this being Memorial Day week weekend, Dr. Harrington and I were talking the other day about how, even in the midst of all the tragedy that we've seen unfold in the universe, in, in America, with violence, in the last couple of weeks, we've been able to revel in the spirituality of the relationship that was a miracle that pre presented this event. <clears throat> so I'd like to just for a moment, we're gonna pray a little bit more. Uh, uh, my twin, uh, Reverend Dunstan, is gonna bring the, the benediction soon. Reverend Dr. Dunstan, the chair of the Religion and Philosophy Department at Clark Atlanta University. Yes, we're classmates. And, uh, but I want us to pray one more time before we, uh, so if you just every head bowed and every eye closed, this is a Memorial Day prayer. Lord, we come to you this Memorial Day weekend with eyes lifted toward heaven. We don't know what to think of the spike in violence in our country most recently. As your Christian soldiers and spiritual warriors, we ask your strength to battle during these tough days as we serve a traumatized public. We pray for the families of children killed in Uvalde, Texas and the families of those killed in Buffalo, New York, and all of those who grieve and are traumatized by the various challenges to life in this century. We ask for the courage of David, the patience of Job, and the love of Jesus Christ as we seek to comfort the brokenhearted. We say these prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen and amen. 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 I'm saying put on the whole armor of God, y'all. Put your seatbelts on. You, the news is just a bunch of prayer requests. Turn on CNN and MSNBC. And for my Republican brothers, you turn on that other channel. But, uh, and sisters. <laughs> but, but let's go down. I, I'm going to share a few words with you and I'll get out of here. First of all, I want to thank everyone for helping us. Helping us put this celebration together. It was truly a miracle. We didn't know each other. We did everything through those little boxes. You know what I'm talking about, Zoom, right? Yeah. And, and Ring Central. We, we just, I looked at some of the people today, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a single man again. I was like, oh, I didn't know you were this beautiful. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at you in a little box. I, you know, some things you just don't translate. Do <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I'm telling like a T.I. is, you know what I'm saying. But anyway. <laughs> No, but anyway, I know my frat brother's laughing over here. All right, yeah, you got me, got me. Okay, so, so it's really a miracle occurrence. You know, we thank Jesus for bringing us along, and, 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 and you know, we, our prayer, 30, 60 days ago, we had no money. 
And all we had was a no. You know, we made the mistake, and we're all administrators and, and educators, of coming to Clark Atlanta a month before graduation and asking to put something else on their plate. <laughs> and you know they're all tired. You know how you are at the end of the year. You're like, something else. Oh, no, 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 no. So they told us no. And we can hardly believe that, but this event came to fore because of something Dr. Harrington taught me. They told us no, and my first instinct, oh, okay, yes. Uh, and my first instinct was they said no. Let's go down the street to Pascal's. Let's go to the hotel. We can raise this money. That's right, that's God right. is going to bless us with this. That's right, that's right. We'll make this happen. So I called down here, and I said, how much, Ms. Shakita Gay? She said, $4,000. And I said, we can do that. And we started raising the money. Now, I'll tell you how I learned that from Dr. Harrington. Here, we'll go back to 2005. And I was a new professor at Texas Southern University. I just spent 16 years serving in the Atlanta University Center. And I went to Texas Southern to teach. And I was in the Graduate School of Education in the Council Department. And Dr. Harrington had just started with Dr. Maddox. At, at Morehouse. He had just come back from University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and come back to Morehouse School of Medicine to begin that grant project. And he said, and he called me on the phone and said, Euro, I want, we're going to change the shape of this and we're going to start visiting the institutions, doing capacity building. And we want to come to Houston. We're coming to Houston first, to Texas Southern. I said, wow. He said, go ask your your, your department chair, if they would support it. And they said, no. <laughs> they said, oh, no. We, he said, Euro, go find a hotel. We got some money. Go find a hotel downtown. We'll set it up, and then we'll invite them to it. I said, OK. I never forget, because when he told me that, I got in the car. I went down to the Marriott. I said, the Marriott not there? He said, the Marriott. And my ring, my Clark Atlanta graduation ring, I had a little fake diamond and the diamond popped out when I walked into the Marriott. <laughs> I'll never forget. It. I was alive. This was alive. So I went in and we, we, we reserved the Marriott and we set everything up. And he said, now this time don't go to your department chair. Go to the president of the college. So I went to the president who was a general. He was interim president after Priscilla Slade. He was General J.T. Body. Went to the president and I said, President Body, Morehouse School of Medicine and the Historically Black College and University Center for Excellence would like to come to Houston and we'd like to invite Texas Southern. These are my colleagues from Atlanta. Would you like to participate? Good Republican general from the Army said, yes, we would. We would love to do that, son. And when he said it, he was a general. When he said Haynes, everybody said Haynes. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so everybody, now the chair, the deans, everybody else came out from under their chair. They said, oh, we will come over. Yes, we will be here. Everybody, my colleagues, everybody. And so that's how we did the program. And that's what happened here. We said, you know what? We don't, we, we'll go down to Pascal's. That's really where we need to be anyway. Because that's the history of, this is a Sankofa program. And Sankofa means standing on the shoulders of the ancestors. It means reaching back on the shoulders of the wisdom of the ancestors while flying forward with new technology, reaching back and getting the egg. And if you know anything about the Pascal brothers, they started out with some chicken sandwiches and some paper bags with potato salad on them and traveling around. Amen. You want to lift the bird up. Amen. The bird is here. The bird is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. You see the bird. Notice it's reaching back to get an egg off its back. And this is our challenge. The shootings that all occur are 18 and 15 year olds in the last three weeks. We need to teach our young people to reach back and enjoy the power of the wisdom of thou shalt not kill. Amen? Amen? You can't learn everything through a little box. Am I right about it? So, so this is the spirit of this program. We celebrate the griots. And all of us want to be celebrated. I'm not, not, I don't look at my fraternity. I look at the colleges and universities. Everybody wants to be celebrated. Wives want to be celebrated. Husbands want to be celebrated. My friend here, I, I, I must mention, Akua Mitchell is my mentee. And she came along right after Dr. Harrington had mentored me for a couple years. And she wanted to come to Atlanta. And again, I'll just tell the truth. 
Y'all want me to tell the truth? I saw Akua walk in the room. She looked like an Egyptian princess as well at a substance abuse conference. And she didn't have a ring on. And I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I didn't know she was married. She was, she was separated at the time, but not wearing a ring. So I said, she said, I'd like to come to Atlanta. I said, come on, come on. And she said, I have a couple kids. I said, I get a two bedroom. <laughs> and so, so she decided, I'm sorry, Cousin Brenda. I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> right, right. But look, I told her, come on to Atlanta. And guess what she did? Now, this is, the, this is true mentoring. Yeah, Aisha, you were little, you don't know the story. Yeah, she's just like, I don't remember this. I got pictures of y'all little. But anyway, she decided to reunite. She said, I'm coming to Atlanta. She, want, she decided to reunite with her husband. And she showed up in my counseling office at Morehouse with her husband and the kids. And I, and this is what Dr. Herrick, you know, I had to be loving and Christian. I said, all right, and we all are coming to Atlanta. And I said, praise God. So I introduced them to my whole network. And we started a mastermind group. And they came, and I, and I led uh, your dad over to ITC. He got the same degree I got. He connected with my mentor, Dr. Haney, and sold her. To, and, and, and now it's 20 some years later. Now they've graduated. She's teaching. And this is how that touch occurs. It's each one teach one. Amen? Amen. 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 So I just want one more point I'll just share with you because I just want to turn this over to my frat brother. And, the, and this is uh, ultimately Dr. Harrington uh, became my mentor because of another mentor, Dr. Thomas Cole Jr., who was my cousin through marriage. When I started, I had finished ITC, and sometimes, as God would have it, things are bigger than you. And I came to, to ITC in 88, and, and, and Dr. Cole took over Clark Atlanta University and, and, and helped merge it. He and, and, and Judge Cole came here in 88. So we all came at the same time, so I wasn't alone. And I was at ITC, and they were on Holly Hill. So they were ready mentors. And my father was about 15 years older than them, and he had kind of mentored them growing up. And so when I came, before I started Clark Atlanta after ITC, my dad said, go talk to your cousin before you get started. So I did. And he said, you're applying for another master's? Why don't you apply for a PhD? You don't need two masters. A PhD will open doors you don't even know exist. Watch out, watch out. And I said, OK. Uh, that's what Dr. Cole said. And so I went and reapplied, and I got accepted. He said, come back and see me. Went back and saw him. He said, now look, I'm going to put you to work. I got some jobs around here. I know you've been very political. I was an activist. He said, don't worry about the politics, just do the work. Just do the work. And then he said, I want you to stick with Dr. Harrington. I'll be traveling, you won't be able to get to me. Dr. Harrington is a solid guy. Stick with him and you'll be okay. That was January of 1992. It's now 30 years later, I'm still sticking with Dr. Harrington. I'm still sticking with Dr. Harrington. After uh, getting my master's, and, and Dr. James told he got his PhD when I got my master's. You know, and this is how we all become connected together. Uh, uh, my father died, and I had to go home after the second master's. I went home. I wouldn't have been here before you today with this long-standing relationship if Dr. Harrington didn't help find a, a scholarship for me to come back to school to finish the PhD three years later. He said, keep the hope alive. Keep writing. <laughs> He's alive. He's right. He did. And, and as we're sitting around the room, and, and praise God, this is while he's yet living and alive and going into another part of his milestones where you can hear this. We normally hear these kind of stories at funerals and we go, oh my God, really? But we, he's done this for, it wasn't just me. It was for so many of us. He went beyond the classroom. And so when I came back, uh, then we kept on. And, and I told you the story about Texas Southern. Then there was something else. And there was something else. No matter what we were going through, no matter what problem I presented, I would call Dr. Heron, he'd answer the phone. So much of ministry is presence. He'd answer the phone. And he'd always have something uplifting to say. Looking on the other side, he knows how to flip the script. 
And he taught me how to flip the script, and it has saved my life so many times. So this last piece is milestones, milestones. Everyone goes through these milestones, right? Uh, uh, you guys know Eric Erickson, right? Eric Erickson had eight stages of development. Now each one of us, uh, you know, Freud uh, mentored Eric Erickson, and Freud mentored Carl Jung, right? Most of us, how many of these uh, of you guys in here? Okay, you already stood up. We took the low road less traveled when we went into clinical psychotherapy and counseling. We see through a different lens. We see things a little bit differently than the average person, right? You can almost, people almost become transparent many times, right? It's like having an extra dose of the Holy Ghost. Well, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so ultimately, every one of us craves recognition, and especially at different stages. In the, in the fifth stage, 12 to 18, that's how you know what the, where these kids are getting off track, is identity versus role confusion. And these kids can get easily pulled off track by these groups online and this stuff because they're at that stage where they're trying to find themselves. And so they don't have their identity formed. And if they're not going to church and they don't have any foundation, spiritual foundation, oh, it's really easy. The next stage is intimacy versus isolation. And that's from 18 to 40. We're trying to find who our cohort is. Who do we trust and who do we love? And our soulmate, too. But who, who are we going through life with? Fraternities, sororities, who's, you know, we formed our identity. Who can we trust? Then from 40 to 65, which is most of us in this room, uh, generativity versus stagnation. And that's where and, and each one, on the one side is the positive, is the successful route. The other side is the crisis. Generativity means you're serving the next generation and you're teaching them. Amen. You're teaching the next generation, not only your children, but the people in your community and your students and your mentees on your job. And this is the result of what brought us all here, generativity, Dr. Harrington's generativity, right? Now, versus being stuck in an earlier stage. You're just still all about you, or you don't know your identity, or you're stuck, isolated somewhere. Serving the next generation. Now, the last phase from 65 on, which is Dr. Harrington, Dr. James, a few of my elders in here, I won't say your names, you know who you are. Integrity versus despair. You want to get to 65, and have some integrity. Lord, I done done what you told me to do. Amen. When the music played, I danced. I sang. I jumped with joy. I went out. I climbed the mountains. I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. This is where we find. That's why he's so happy and peaceful. That's why he's smiling and it can give us a smile and a laugh and an uplifting song. He's at integrity. And this is where we want to be. And I, I, I know he's not going to just stop working. You know, he, he, he's going to keep working. He's going to keep doing his work. As his buddy said, I, did you love that video from Palmer? Palmer, how he said it. He said, you, whether Palmer, now that's his boy. Palmer is his ace boom coon, right? So, so Dr. Harrington, I just want to say, laugh, and finally, I love you. I appreciate you. It's nice to meet your family. And, and we love you, and, and I want to bring up, we're going to keep on continuing this dynamic. You put us out ahead of the race with this remarriage between science and spirituality. So we'll keep, you, you heard a preacher preach today. You heard a dean of education speak today. You heard a psychiatrist from Morehouse School of Medicine teach today. And you know, like I he, he, he has sent us across the universe with whatever God has called us to do and blessed us all the same. So thank you, Dr. Harrington. Give him another round of applause. And I'm gonna bring up Dr. Ramondo James. Because the, the final word will come, you know Dr. Harrington, every experience is a teaching experience for Dr. Harrington. So he was teaching us all through this dynamic. You know, all my committee members that work with me, God bless you and thank you, nice to meet you. All right. 
All right, Doc. Yes, sir, Frat. All right. right. Let's, let's, let's give my old man a hop. Come on. Hey, man, boy, what you, you know? Hey, a little housekeeping. Did uh, Turner leave? Turner, raise your hand. This guy was one of my classmates. That was a small, hot little guy in my class. I didn't want to sit next to him, but he was a small, little something. Now he's the dean of school. He's the dean now. I don't know if you remember me, but I used to bring peanuts from South Carolina and give them to everybody. But he's here now. But you know, I said earlier, there's something while we're here, man. Uh, my South Carolina table, uh, the, uh, edu the emotional intelligence. Just stand for a moment, please. Emotion and tell PhD, just saying, just saying, just saying. That whole South Carolina table, they're doing PhDs too. And uh, a lady there from Cameroon, Africa, she's gone. And, and then, of course, a medical doctor, my RA research assistant, please stand, Ms. Lewis. She's going to be a medical doctor. All from South Carolina. And Ms. Ro Ms. Roberts, where's Ms. She came here, her name was on the program earlier. And she's a millionaire now. She came through the program, but she decided, well, Dr. Harrington is planting some seeds. I'm going to do something else. And what I'm about to share with you, Ms. Roberts, where are you? She's going to Florida. Did she leave? She wanted to make a donation to the program. OK, well, OK. She's from Charleston. What I want you to do is this. We got 15, Doc. You got 15? Yeah, but they didn't give us any extra chairs, so you know they'll kick us out. That's a frat brother talking. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what we're going to do in brevity. This page in your book, turn to it. Turn to this page right here. Do it right now. Let me tell you about the wheel. Find a way or make a way. Find a way. I know you looked through it, but you didn't digest it in your spirit. You see names like uh, Oprah Winfrey, President Benjamin Mays, Dr. Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass. Please listen, Jackie Robinson. My committee in South Carolina said we got to add a name that is now. He's not retirement. His name is Dr. Eugene Harrington. Look and see what's there. His name is on that wheel. And down below are certain things. And I'm going to tell you why they said that. I got three minutes left. I was going to give another lecture. They know what this man has done in South Carolina. I lost the chairman. My chairman of the department died. I have a radical PhD. He said, I'll take it. And he did. We went to South Carolina to politics my study. You reap what you sow. And Kellogg sponsored the study. This man was hired to come to South Carolina to deal with that 500 black males. Many of those males now are now lawyers and, and they are doctors, Dr. Harrington. Many of those 500, 400 black males under Kellogg, man, they were paid for it. What a man we have in this. And then there was a time to get a black professor, I'm sorry, black head coach at Clemson University, and that's where I am. And we needed a man to say he needed to be a full professor. I couldn't call my brother, my sister, nobody else. I called Dr. Harrington. He came to South Carolina, and he got on the federal court. Listen to what this man did. And he said to, to, the, to the courtroom, now they had psychiatrists, smart, just like my brother Hill. They were all white. They had all kind of people, the psychologists, all trying to trap this man to say, he's not worthy, I'm not worthy, we don't need a black head coach. You didn't know he was in the politics. That man, your brother got up there, Mr. Hill, and he said, he crossed his arm and he began to speak to those psychiatrists, psychologists, they tried to trap him too. Their arms were too short to box with God. We hired the first black head coach at Clemson University, you, you, his name was Hill. It was through this man. And it was on my behalf. We wrote a book and a movie based on my PhD, P-R-I-D-E. Name of the truck stop, Shirley, look it up. He came to evaluate that particular movie at a Clemson Theater. He found time to come to see the movie that we wrote. And he went to the prison system. There's something about this man. Retirement is too finite. He's not retiring, he's moving on. He's a spinoff to some things. Already there's some of the people at the South Carolina, they want to be in touch with him. You get in touch with him. With that, I got one minute left, and I'm going to say Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. And I, now I got to hear direct your path. I know I'm supposed to take a, read the plaque, present the plaque. No, no don't do that now. Bring him on up. Bring him on up. Come on up. See, I'll follow the direction. Bring him on up. All right. And that's a cue for you. He directs way from the back. Brother, thank you for everything. Thank you. It's just the beginning. Yes. God bless you. Bring him on up and I'm moving now. Huh? You're moving. <laughs> Do I have the podium? You got the podium now. Really? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. You know, I, I want to say that um, all of you here tonight, this evening, are being honored. It's not Dr. Harrington, but it's every last one of you in this room here, in the Maynard Jackson room at Pascal's Hotel, are being honored tonight. And I know I, I have an idea of what many of you had to do to get here. And, uh, but you made it and you're present here and I do thank you for that. As um, all the, the different uh, speakers spoke from this podium tonight, um, I have several families and I have my biological family and if they would stand at this particular time, I would appreciate it. You're part of our family, too. I am. Yes, oh. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I have the, um, I, I want to start with the uh, academic families. And that will be the persons in this room who receive master's degrees from Clark Atlanta University, one exceptional university make a way or find a way, and they find a way to get their master's degrees. Will you all stand again, please? There are some um, students here who have the specialist degree, and I think we have a couple at this table over here as the masters and the specialists. Will you stand? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> also, uh, I have the doctoral students who actually came to Clark Atlanta University in the doctoral program and completed that program. Will you all stand, please? And I have a spiritual family here, the uh, religious science persons from Atlanta and Decatur. Will you all stand, please? <laughs> now, in acknowledging people, you always miss somebody that I, I, I have friends here, just friends, period. You know, there's. <laughs> and, and you know, Vincent uh, is a, a voiceover professional, and his son is here behind that camera right there. Stand up, man. And uh, let me see, who else have I missed? Or have I. Oh, I can't f f forget that, please. My, my favorite, my people from Arkansas. You know, uh, I left Clark Atlanta University in 02, and I drove through uh, Georgia into Alabama and into Mississippi. When I got to Mississippi, I said, Eugene, what are you doing to yourself? I don't think you know what to do with. And I finally got to Arkansas, and um, it was another world, but I learned to love the people at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, and we had a wonderful time. They're a very special group because many of them were um, uh, uh, older students, and they had families and so forth. And I remember when we did the uh, comprehensive exams, I came to class early and I saw a big group of students in the room, 
uh, they were holding hands in close circle. They was praying, Jesus, help me pass. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they taught me something about that one. Uh, and and I, I, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. When I first um, started teaching at Clark Atlanta University, I always say one exceptional university, make a way or find a way. Uh, I walked into the classroom in room 203 uh, for Dale on the third floor. And um, one of the students said, oh, I'm glad you're in this class. I said, ma'am, I'm the professor. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I am the professor. Then I stood up before the lec lectern and started teaching. And there was a black male in the back of the room, and he, he raised his hand. He said, Dr. Harrington, how long you been teaching? And I got nervous, and my knees started shaking, because that was my first day teaching. So one of the other thankful black females, she said, Dr. Harrington, just keep doing what you're doing. Amen. And I've been doing that since Amen. then. Doing it since. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just, just, just thank all of you so very, very much. And um, we've made new friends because a lot of the students, I haven't seen them since they graduated. That's right. That's right. And, and with the COVID and the mask, I, couldn't, I didn't recognize them at first because uh, it was a long time. And we pulled ourselves together, uh, Tracy, uh, um, because I said she called me one day and asked me to um, sign off her, her paper for supervision. And um, I did that, and, and she talked to Dr. Romano James, and they, they were the spark. Amen. Tracy was the Tracy was the trace that sparked all of this. Amen. And I want to say about Tracy, in a few hours, a few days, she will be a licensed practical all right. therapist. So <laughs> yeah, and. Um, Yeah, yes, yes, it will happen. It That's will right. happen. So you can make referrals to her, and if they make them to me, I'm going to refer them to her. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, what else can I say? What more can I say? Uh, Pat, I'd like for you to say a few words about uh, you, 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 you develop a career too, didn't you? <laughs> You can tell that story. You can tell that story. What, your favorite story? No, about the uh, poetry. Poet, poet. Being a poet. Being a poet. Poetry? A storyteller. Storyteller. Oh, oh, you want to do it up here? We don't, we don't get these special moments every day to, uh, to, to relate to each other. All of us become friends, and we, we, we've got re, uh, relationships building, and we're going to be connected because a lot of these people in here are business people. Amen. And I want them, before I sit down, to name their business uh, that they're in. So if you want to work with them, you can can because, first of all, Vincent is a voiceover professional. He will teach you how to use your voice and make money from doing so. But she, go ahead, Pat. I can't remember the year, but, um, and I was telling um, my, the gentleman sitting beside me, the way I met Dr. Harrington was that we were going to this um, same church, and we would come out together, and he would go to this library. And I thought he was working there. And so every Sunday he would come out and he would go there. And so one Sunday he spoke to me and we started talking. I said, oh, you're going back to work? And he said, no, I parked my car there. <laughs> and so, so we took off from there and I had a study group. And he came to the study group and he was listening to me. I teach in storytelling form. And so he was listening to me and he said, you are a storyteller. And I said, what? 
He said, and he analyzed me and told me who I was because I didn't know. <laughs> okay. I just be honest with you, I didn't know because I, I don't analyze anything. And so he said, you a storyteller. And I said, tell stories? And he said, yes, that's what you are. And so I became a professional storyteller. She's a professional storyteller. Sarah, I want you to come up. Now, we work very close with our Arkansas group, and uh, I'm so happy that you guys made the trip and you're here. We, we don't get these opportunities all the time, so we have to take full advantage of those opportunities. So, we did work in ACC, UCF, yes. and in Washington. Yes. Um. Once I completed the Addiction Studies program, Dr. Harrington and I continued to work together. Uh, I twice applied for the HBCU, the uh, grant that allowed the colleges to have their own behavioral health program, and I was awarded that. Uh, I was awarded a grant twice at two different institutions. But along with that, because of Dr. Harrington, the students now at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff have the opportunity to apply for um, those minority scholarships that would allow, fellowships that will allow them to have additional funds to continue their education. So we have continued to uh, work together closely. And I don't plan to leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know we always miss somebody or something, but is anybody here would like to just say something about this 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 event, about your 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 life story, or anything? You're welcome to come forward. I know we can all sing together because we sang the national anthem very nicely, <laughs> but I want to hear somebody talk. Bernice, <laughs> come. It's your day. <laughs> your day. Heather, <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> well, wow. Such a giving man. Give it up for Dr. Eugene. All right, okay. <laughs> come on, on your feet, on your feet. Thank you. I saw somebody, uh, I, I saw somebody, I think his name is Darian Wright. Darian, please come. <laughs> now, we, we're almost like parallel buddies because what Darian does, I do, and what, what you do, whatever, how you will say it. <laughs> Clark Atlanta University School of Social Work. That's right. Dr. Do. Dr. Yeah, one exceptional school, find a way to make one. Yes. Amen. Uh, good afternoon again. My name is uh, Dr. Darren E. Wright. And part of me being Dr. Darren E. Wright has to do with Dr. Harrington. I started in the School of Social Work in 2006 as the Director of Field Education. And Dr. Harrington and I met through one of the previous deans, Dr. Rufus Sylvester Lynch, mm -hmm. at a conference that I presented. And after the conference, Dr. Harrington came up to me and said, Darren, I see potential in you, and I want you to consider uh, writing this grant for substance abuse and addiction. And I also want you to consider going forward for your PhD. And Dr. Harrington has been instrumental on my journey. Amen. And I thank him for all that he's done for me as a mentor. And I now continue on at the School of Social Work as Director for Education and Associate Professor. And a huge part of that has to do with Dr. Eugene Harrington. Thank, thank you, you sir. Right. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm so very proud of my brother. I came so, I came so far to be with my brother's celebration. Um, he's next to me. I kept him in line. <laughs> but I was very proud of keeping him in line. He did very well, and I'm so proud of him. Keep up the good work. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Clark Atlanta University School of Social Work. My father, as you can tell, loves to break, put people on the spot. And you have to just say whatever comes to your mind. But I just want to thank everybody for coming out today, celebrating my father. It was great to hear all of the, um, the stories and how he has really um, impacted a lot of people. And it is just, it makes my heart. I'm proud of my dad, so I can say that. And the same force that he gives you, he gives to me and my brother, and I think we get, get it worse than the rest of you all. So we, we see a different side that really just pushes us to be the best that we could be. And I, I thank you for that. Um. It is great that everyone showed up today for my father. Um, I understand all of what you guys said because he gives to me worse than I think you guys get it. Um, he's one of the reasons why I went back and got my master's. Um, I've, I've fought him since I graduated from, got my BS in accounting. It's like, I don't want to go back to school. Alabama, tell him Alabama I went to Alabama State. That's right. Um, and he would say, go get your master's. I was like, dad in accounting, we don't need a master's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, I don't need a master's because I'm in accounting. I don't need it. And um, he would tell me all the time, go back and get that master's. And I fought him and I fought him and I fought him until one day one best friend came up and said, I'm going to get my master's. And I was like, turn. <laughs> <laughs> So he's going to get his master, and once my dad found out about it, it was going to be extra hard on him. So I went in and got my master's, and he and I stayed up late nights writing papers. And um, he came to me and was like, I learned so much about the finance world helping you get your master's. And um, it put me in the I didn't think he went to sleep, but he'd wake up. And he called me at 3 o'clock and said, read the paper. I'm like, Dad, I got to go to work in the morning. He's like, read the papers, 3 o'clock, I just sent it back. So I'm like, OK. So I read the papers, and I made it through without his help. And now he's on me about getting a doctor. <laughs> and uh, like, again, finance people don't get doctors. <laughs> so I'm like, writing him on that, and I hear it all the time about, you need to go get your doctorates. But, from him, I was able to become a financial director CFO for a school district. Um, and learning how to speak in public and from this guy here, you know, um, he pushes and pushes and pushes. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, one day, I'll never forget this, but we were riding in the car, and he always get me in the car when we were And uh, he'll ask me yes or no question. And uh, he looked over and said, you'll never beat me at anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been trying to beat him. <laughs> so I make sure I'm up on all current events, anything that's going on, so when you do talk, yeah, I know. <laughs> so that has always kept me involved and keep pushing and uh, I appreciate it.
Well, Karen Jackson and our team of Irish will come to the Dr. Tia. And this, this is going to be the final. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Tia Harrington, uh, Spellman uh, graduate, and um, she is a school. Uh, I am a middle grades <coughs> curriculum coach. Middle grade curriculum coach. Yes. This celebration for me, so my current position, I am the middle grades curriculum coach at West Atlanta Charter School. Prior to that, I served a number of years at Point University as the middle grades program coordinator. And one of the things that I have always talked to my students about, um, the teachers that I work with, is about education and what it truly means. And this celebration, for me, is a reminder of what it means to be an educator. Mm. It's so much more than the content that you're teaching. Amen. It is about the lives that you are impacting. And so what you are seeing today mm -hmm. is a reflection of all of those lives that you have touched. Amen. So on behalf of the Harrington family, thank you all so much for coming and for recognizing Dr. Harrington. Appreciate you. One more. One more. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I think I'm the last one, so yes. y'all can take a, a deep breath. Um, so uh, I am Kevin Jackson. I'm married to Sony, Dr. Harrington's um, daughter. And um, uh, just to be brief, I mean, we've been married 27 years. And, uh, you know, he, he has always been a stellar, dignified figure. Uh, and you know, I know what his daughter expects of her husband because of who her dad is. <laughs> and to, to stand up here and hear all of the stories, you know, is, is confirming of all of that. But the impact, uh, how, how much he's made on so many people's lives who, who've also made impacts on others' lives is, is what, you know, kind of came through today. So again, on behalf of the family, I want to thank everybody for coming out and thank you for your love. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that are coming from the floor? Any other announcements? Uh, I want to say in the back of the room is a lot of handouts. Uh, there's also some online programs from Morehouse School of Medicine online um, program like biotechnology. And uh, I must say Sony Jackson has been accepted in the biotechnology program, online program at Morehouse School of Medicine. Now anybody anywhere in the United States, in the continental United States, can, can do these programs. And uh, there's handouts on the back table, some of the handouts on the back table, but if you need more information, let me know and I can get it for you. And I will turn this over to my dear student and, and professor, uh, the, he's gonna close the program. Philip Dunstan. Benediction. This is, this is your, what, he's going to do the benediction. Right. I just want to uh, immediately follow him on. Everybody to gather as quickly as possible. No chit chat. We're going to take one big group picture. Immediately follow the benediction. When you say amen, start moving this way. <laughs> Here is one of my premier students from Clark Atlanta University <laughs> by way of ITC. And I remember he came and he got accepted in the program. He was a scholar student, and he still is. He's a professor in religion and philosophy at Clark Atlanta University currently. Amen. Thank you. To God be the glory. Yes. What God has done. Thank God for you, Dr. Harrington. Thank God for all of you for coming to share this special occasion. Tracy, thank you, Dr. Hill. Thank you so much. Dr. Harrington, thank you for who you are and for what you have done and what you have meant to all of us. In the spirit of the black church, let's stand for our benediction. He is always a teacher. So he gave me the prayer of benediction that he wanted me to read to you. And it's a prayer for protection. Dr. Harrington loves all of us and he is asking God to protect us by James Freeman, let us pray. Oh God, let the light of 
your presence around us. Let your love enfold us. Let your power protect us. Allow your presence to watch over us wherever we are. We give you praise in Christ's name.